A big hello and a very warm welcome to a special showing right here on ET Now. I'm joined by a very special guest. I call him the money man, but of course he <laughs> says that he has no control over money and he just looks at people spending money. I'm talking about none other than John Murphy, the president and the chief financial officer of the Coca-Cola company. Thank you so much, John, for joining us right here. Truly a pleasure to be speaking with you. What brings you to India? Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. I am in India for the first time since the end of 2018 on a visit to meet many of our partners and to have the opportunity here in Lucknow to visit our bottling facilities and to just get a sense as to what's happening with the business and with the country in general. Right. And what is your uh, status report so far? Well, it's been, I must say, I'm impressed with the compression of progress, as I would call it, to see the electrification of India and the acceleration that's underway there, to see many of the infrastructure investments that we were chatting about earlier, sure. uh, just all across the country. And I think as much as anything else, to see how India is perhaps leading the way when it comes to digitization. It's, it's impressive to see. And all of those are enablers for companies like ours, for our bottling partners to, to look at a, an even higher growth ambition for, I think, for many years to come. So, John, you know, it's been an interesting three years, to say the least, for all of us personally and, of course, for, for, for big businesses um, and, business, and small businesses. Uh, the last time I spoke with your colleague, uh, James Quincy, when he was doing his India visit in 2019, he uh, talked about, you know, how, uh, how Coca-Cola has been uh, very successfully reinvesting in the sparkling business. He's talked about how, uh, you know, he, you, you guys have refranchised, uh, you know, your bottling business and, of course, sold off a lot of your ownership when it talks about bottling uh, in America and large parts of Europe and the rest of the world. Uh, can you give me a sense of how that's worked for you now that we're sitting in 2023? You've had a, uh, you know, a terrible two years, but, you know, despite all that, how, how that's worked out for you? Sure. COVID for, for us was, in hindsight, an opportunity. Notwithstanding the many um, serious uh, elements associated with the, with the pandemic, but for businesses, I think it was an opportunity to take a step back and to really rethink how to be more effective and more efficient going forward. Sure. And so in that regard, it played into some of the things that James spoke to you about uh, pre-COVID. It, it has allowed us to accelerate the, the shaping of a growth portfolio of brands that we think have the have tremendous runway. It has allowed us to become even more aligned with our bottling partners around the world and to step up in how we execute together. And for the company, the ongoing objective to focus on things that we're good at, building brands, developing franchises with our partners, sure. et cetera, is, uh, is something that continues to be very, very important. So that whole refranchising program is still very much underway and we feel that we are making progress and will continue for the next couple of years. Okay. Uh, you know, so excited to be talking to a CFO, to be honest, because I, I expect you to be a lot more candid and give me a lot more numbers. Uh, I hope I'm not being too optimistic, but I have to ask you, uh, you know, this whole focus on Coca-Cola being a total beverage company. Uh, and I, I've seen that there's been a lot of, uh, you know, aggression, not just in India, but in several parts of the world uh, in terms of your portfolio expansion. Uh, so many congratulations on that. However, I do want to know uh, whether at this point in time in 2023, is there an internal evaluation by the global leadership of Coca-Cola to look at you being just a, a total beverage company or actually looking at a portfolio expansion, given, given that some of the, uh, the categories that you're aligned to are naturally, uh, you know, going to face some obstacles as the Western world at least becomes, you know, more health conscious. Uh, I mean, India, of course, you have a large play here because our sugar consumption is is, is laughable. So, uh, you know, for, for emerging economies like us, sure, uh, it's a great bet. But what happens to countries where you're 
you're set in stone and you, you, you are, you know, the biggest brand when one talks of carbonated beverages. Yeah, so I, I, don't, I, I think we are very consumer-centric, mm. more so, I think, than we've ever been. The last five or six years, we have, I think, moved from being a, a company that was very, very focused on, on just a couple of categories, because that's, that's been in our DNA for over 100 years, sure. to being one that's more focused on what, what the consumers want, mm. both today and to anticipate what they might want in the future. Sure. And so that has led to the expansion of the portfolio, uh, but in a way that creates value for all involved, including ourselves. Uh, we feel in the context of India that we have today a, a pretty strong portfolio of brands that plays now in a number of categories. And the opportunity for me over the coming three to five years is to step up the way in which we leverage those brands uh, across the country versus having a proliferation. You know, a proliferation agenda for, um, if, you, if, if you allow me to for CFOs, yes. is one that <laughs> creates, I think, the lowest amount of value. Absolutely. And so for me, what I'm really interested in in seeing is, is, is the balance between following the consumer, but then optimizing the value creation that's available to, to the ecosystem that we're part of. So are you the man who's constantly rejecting the, the re-diversification into foods? I'm just asking. I am the man who would advocate greatly that the upside in, our, in the business that we know mm -hmm. and that we are pretty decent at, but not by any means masters of yet, is where we can create the most value. And that would be the beverages. And that is in beverages. You know, the, today, if you, if you want a couple of numbers, there are 8 billion people on the planet. Mm -hmm. We serve about 1.5 billion people. So for me, the upside available to trying to encourage the remaining six and a half to drink beverages is much greater than for me to try and figure out how to become good at another industry. Fair point. Uh, I have a couple of rejoinders to that, but I first want to talk about, um, you know, your, uh, you know, the category per se, which is the carbonated beverages category globally, uh, you know, as an industry, would I be accurate to say that it's going at about 3%, give or take? 3 to 4%. 3 to 4%. 3 to 4%. 3 to 4%. Yeah. On, on, a, on a regular run rate. The last two to three years, we have seen an uptick in that growth for a variety of reasons. Oh, okay. Influenced by, I think, people's behaviors and habits during and, and post-COVID. I think there's been, uh, it has created uh, somewhat of a tailwind for the sparkling category that we've, uh, we've been fortunate to, to enjoy. Wow, and, and does that momentum continue in the post-COVID era? I think for the foreseeable future, it, 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 it can. I think we need to be long-term though in the way we think about growth. Okay. And so the, you know, mid-single, low to mid-single, digit growth for the sparkling category globally is, is fair, but that's an average. And okay. so part of the, I think of the, uh, the enjoyment of driving a global portfolio is to get below the averages, to get granular in where the opportunities are, and then to make sure that we're set up for success at that, at that local level, mm -hmm. um, such as here in, in India, where the opportunity for sparkling is significantly higher than sure. low to uh, mid-single digit uh, over for many years to come. You make a very good point, but I do have uh, some confusion in my mind. When you look at, let's say, a company of your scale, size, and repute, right, uh, and you operate, you know, in over 200 countries, uh, and you look at countries like ours, which is developing or emerging or however you want to tag it, uh, and you look at Countries like the U.S., which are, uh, you know, more mature, sophisticated uh, markets. Isn't it funny that in markets where you're established, Western markets, uh, you have a concern because consumers are getting more health conscious. And in uh, countries like ours, where, you know, uh, your runway is huge, uh, it's because these are poorer markets, 
your SKUs that are doing very well would be much smaller. So, uh, you know, and your price play and your margin play is not that great. So how do you as a CFO kind of manage that? And is that your key concern? You know, I think there's, there's, it's important to differentiate between driving a portfolio that's appropriate at an enterprise level, at a global level, and then having that be converted into what's appropriate for, uh, for the local market. And in India is no exception. We have certain principles that are applicable regardless of where we play. Uh, when it comes to what does the consumer want, need, um, and how do we think about providing um, the right options to them. So we are very committed to making sure that around the world we're offering a portfolio for people who want to have zero calories, who want to have low calories. We have a packaging range, I think, around the world that's I, I second to nobody in FMCG in terms of offering portion sizes that are that are appropriate for consumers and and we are you know part of the portfolio expansion mm. that we've been doing over the last few years has been also driven by this this need that consumers have for for different choices whether they be more healthy um, more hydration more energy more indulgence uh, we think there's a, an opportunity for us to be part of of that consumer equation sure for instance, in 2018, right, uh, the former CEO of Coca-Cola India, Krishna Kumar, uh, who I know rather well and who's now joined your rival, yes. right, uh, with Reliance launching Kempa. Uh, when I interviewed him at that point in time, he they were on a rampage in terms of actual uh, product launches. I believe in that year alone, when I spoke with him, uh, Coca-Cola India had launched 18 new variants, new products, right, in terms of beverages. Now, my question to you is, and you're the best man to answer this, does it make sense for a country like ours, uh, where we are still trying to increase consumption, right, uh, to launch 18 variants? Does it justify it? The short answer to that question is, we need to shape the right balance between that choice and value creation. And I think we've learned actually through that period that uh, proliferation, overdoing it to chase every opportunity actually is not necessarily the optimal way. A former colleague who is, you know, uh, is all guns blazing to attack the India market and, you know, Reliance, uh, they have an extreme stronghold in India. Uh, they are uh, extremely very well vested with all stakeholders of the country who are important. And... Uh, you know, we saw them come and disrupt the telecom industry so much so that it's bleeding at the moment. Uh, and now they have entered, uh, for some reason, uh, the carbonated uh, beverage industry. So are you are you worried? Uh, because it is Mukesh Ambani. They've got the money power. They are going with that whole agenda of the national agenda being Indian, which seems to be working in India uh, very well. It's really a hit formula. And uh, they're looking, and they've already started you know, I, I, you've already blinked first. You've dropped your pricing by five rupees. Uh, so my point is, they're going to come. They're going to be cheap. That's their strategy. We know their playbook. And uh, they're going to attack Coca-Cola and Pepsi, which is their stated objective. Are you a worried man for India? So we, we've been in business a long time around the world. And what I have learned over 35 years of being in business with Coca-Cola is that the more intense competition is in the industry, the better the industry flourishes. Uh, the industry in India is still in the early stages of development relative to the runway that's possible ahead. And so we, we, we're, we're, we're open for the competition. We welcome uh, the more players in the industry to create that intensity. And um, we believe that our, we, have a, we have our playbook. We have a portfolio of leading brands that I think will endure over time. We've, we've seen that in many, many parts of the world. We have a group of partners in India who have the wherewithal to 
be able to compete and to grow this business. Sure. And um, and so we're 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 excited to see the industry being so dynamic. And at the end of the day, it's up to how one executes each and every day. We're a daily business. Sure. You gotta you gotta show up in hundreds of thousands of locations each and every day with a, a an arsenal that is pre pre comprehensive, and we feel that we're we're up for it. But John, I also think there is some merit in the fact that uh, globally and in India, we have grown up with uh, Coca Cola, Thumbs Up, and Pepsi. So these are tastes that we are used to. And isn't it true, and correct me if I'm wrong, that especially with carbonated beverages, uh, there is, uh, you know, something called a matter of habit to suddenly break a habit to try a new cola, which might have a completely different formulation, may not be as easy to break. I mean, I might be wrong, you tell me. You know, I think, I think consumers, people, not consumers, people tend to stay loyal to brands that deliver on their promise. You know, there's a great, a, you know, a, a brand is a promise and a great brand is a promise kept. Mm -hmm. And one of the enduring values that we, that we feel has allowed us to be in business for over 100 years is keeping our brand promises, whether it's Coca-Cola, whether it's Thumbs Up, whether it's Sprite. Um, it's up to us to keep them relevant. It's up to us to keep, um, to keep our brands at the, at the front of people's minds. Sure, which is, brings me to my next question. We've seen some magnificent cola wars, not just globally, but in India. You know, those were the good yesteryears where advertising was tongue in cheek and, you know, we had fun doing our jobs. Uh, it looks like it's coming back with the whole, uh, you know, Campa, relo Campa launch or relaunch. Uh, are you as the money man giving the India office and the chief marketing officer enough leeway to spend enough money to take on uh, this new entrant? <laughs> the team in India has all the resources that they need to drive the agenda that we, we feel really good about. Uh, we have a tremendous marketing team here in India. Some of the work they're doing is, is leading edge globally. We, um, we, sure. We're borrowing and copying it in different parts of the world. So this is, this is not a, a money conversation. You know, the resources are available. You've got, you've, got to give, you've got to give him or her a big marketing budget. You know, and the fact of the matter is we are slowing down globally. Uh, you know, globally we are slowing down. India is currently saying that we're in a safe spot, but we are going to slow down too. Uh, we have several macroeconomic factors. I'm sure you are obsessed with the currency fluctuation, uh, given that you have you are, you, you're operating in over 200 countries, right? I'm very interested <laughs> in it. I'm very interested in it. But I also am very interested in doing what's right for the long term. Mm -hmm. the, the, the world does not move in a straight line. And so we see periods of bursts of growth. We see periods where things slow down. Our philosophy is to stay invested for the long term. And that means sometimes you, will, you may overinvest for a period and sure. not get the returns. Sure. But over the long haul, uh, it pays off. And, Absolutely. And that's, and that's yeah. Yeah. my focus is to, ver is to support our teams and make sure that we don't, we don't chase every, every rabbit that, um, that appears. We don't uh, shy away from doing what's right for the long term health of these brands. And, and India is a, is a place where lots of distractions out there. For sure. <laughs> and, and yet staying focused, yes. staying true to what yes. is right for the brands and for the business and supporting that with the right resources. It's a, it's a pretty simple equation. But the execution of that Absolutely. each and every day yeah. is what's not that simple. And that's what we are. I'm most excited about this trip is seeing that step up in the, the, the energy and the focus on being in all parts of India every day sure. to, uh, to capture the opportunity we see. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, having said that, I do want to talk about, uh, you know, this grand uh, $5.1 billion acquisition you made with Costa. Uh, it's been a few years now. Of course, we've had some tough times. You've, you've lost probably a couple of years of focus because of, of COVID. But having said that, I think now as 
the CFO, you'd have a you'd have a good idea as to whether that investment was worth your time or not. Uh, and yes, <laughs> okay. short, the short answer is yes. Yes, we we look at the at the opportunity map yeah. for many years out. Yeah, hot coffee, hot beverages sure. was a space that we didn't really have a play in. Yeah, uh, we see Costa as being one of those levers that can help us get into a space that historically we've not played in. Yes, the timing was unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, when you buy a, a retail business and six months later COVID hits, um, not part of the plan. It's uh, tragic. But our, our, again, I go back to what I said earlier about being, being focused on the long term. We still like the long term opportunity. We have a great brand in Costa. Albeit more local at the moment, okay. but we see the opportunity to build that in a number of key markets around the world. In fact, here in India, we've got a number of, of Costa stores and uh, ambitions to have a lot more okay. in, the next, in the next couple of years. Um, so, and, but Costa is not just about retail. There are many platforms. We've got ready to drink options. We've got at home options. We've got a, a, a vending option called mm. Costa Express mm. that produces and delivers a fantastic cappuccino, sure. if you like cappuccino sure. or, yes. or whatever, whatever you like. So we're very bullish still about Costa, but there's work to be done. Yes. And the, the last couple of years have been challenging. Uh, and, and yet we, we keep that long-term perspective and we're doubling down to make up for some lost ground. Let's talk about, you know, Currently, what is your rock star category? When I say rock star category, I'm only talking monies, right? Which category is delivering the best to you? Uh, so uh, you're not going to like the answer because it's not as as, as wow of an answer as many would expect. The sparkling category, exactly, it's sparkling. It continues to be a not only a driver of growth for us, but when you look at industry profit pools, it is by far and away the largest still, share of the profit still, pool. Still, still the king share. Yes. Right. Uh, so would I be right to then assume that the second most lucrative category for you is water? Uh, no, it's not. No? No? It's, it's not. We, uh, we have the coffee category is a, is a big category for us. Uh, not would just it be Costa. Cup, second in the pecking order? Uh, not, not necessarily second. Uh, the juice category is a very large category for us. And okay. Uh, both in the U.S. and globally. Yeah. In the U.S., we have a brand called Simply that's a, a, a leader in the market. We have a Minute Maid that plays a role in many markets around the world. And, and so we're, we're driving value in all of these categories. Sparkling continues to be, by far and away, our, our, our number one. Uh, but we're, when you look at the growth prospects ahead, uh, the juice category, the... Um, Premium water category, okay. very good, and other hydration um, sports drink is also is also very uh, very accretive. So us. break it down for me and my audience. So you have sparkling at number one, and number two would be number two would be uh, the juice category. Okay. Um, number three uh, would be the tea and coffee. We combine them together, sure. tea and coffee yeah. category. Yeah. And then number four, we would be hydration. Which would include premium water. Which would include premium water. Okay. Um, we also play in the energy category yeah. with, uh, with Monster, who is our partner. Uh, and that's also a very, very healthy, profitable category. Sure. Uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, some of your uh, uh, India stars, right? So we had... Uh, you, a couple of your brands which made it as a billion dollar brand. Thumbs up. Thumb, thumbs up Sprite. Yes. Right. And now I hear that at least the rumor mills are, and you can you can confirm this to me, uh, is that Maza is well on its way to becoming a billion dollar brand by 2024. Uh, are you seeing that kind of progress and can we say yes that's a possibility in 2024? That's the trajectory. That's what we're, we're looking for. And when I looked at the plans that our team has for Maza mm. for this year and going into next year, it, very exciting, very exciting. And um, we'll celebrate the, the third one uh, very soon. Lovely to hear that. Uh, having said that, you know, you've done 
some seriously good work in terms of uh, numbers in India. Uh, where are you looking uh, at growth from this market? Which categories? It has to be carbonated, right? It's actually, it's all, it's all of it. When, when, when you look at the stage of development of, the, of all of the categories in India, we see upside everywhere, which is the great news. Mm. I think the challenge, as I mentioned earlier, the challenge is to stay very focused and disciplined sure. on building the foundations to have over time a, you know, a, a, very, a very profitable and, uh, and, and consumer friendly business. Um, so, yeah, all, all of them, there's a lot of opportunity in India. On that note, John, uh, lovely speaking with you. I hope to have several more conversations with you when you're in India or when I visit your headquarters. Uh, wishing Coca-Cola lots of power, not just globally, but also in India, where this uh, particular segment is hotting up. Thank you. And uh, thank you again for uh, giving me time. Thank no, you so thank much. you for welcoming me and you're welcome anytime to our modest headquarters in Atlanta. We'd love to have you there. I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you.